what a commanding presence he is, <laughs> which is true. Now, when's the first time, if you don't mind me saying this, Mr. Sharansky, the first time I saw you was obviously a big day in your life, but it was actually a big day in my life, too. I was a CBS News correspondent. This is probably my favorite assignment. What a day for you, I can only imagine. But, well, it was in Berlin, Germany, a very cold day in February of 1986, and CBS News had sent me to cover the release, finally, the freedom for this prisoner of Zion. I had seen your wife, Avital, in Israel, in London, and other European cities, giving news conferences, meeting with world leaders, pointing out the injustice that was occurring in the Soviet Union. I'm sure, these many years later, you're still very proud of what Avital did. Oh yes, for sure. I would recommend everybody, before you go to prison, you have to marry as I did. <laughs> <laughs> which is a fantastic thing. So, in 1986, 24 years ago, you fulfilled your dream of going to Israel. So all these years later, how about the state of Israel? Has it been everything you expected? Well, uh, that day that you're speaking about, I really, it was a very dramatic one. It started in, in Soviet prison. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It started the Soviet prison, then I was taken by airplane to Germany, as they found out. Then I was taken by American ambassador from <coughs> Eastern Germany, from Eastern Berlin to Western, and then met my wife, and in the evening I was uh, near the Western Wall in the old city with all my friends, with my wife whom I didn't see for 12 years, and so on. So it was straight from hell to paradise. Paradise is the heavens. So when you are in the heavens, you can only go down. <laughs> so I have to say, for 24 years, I go down, 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 <laughs> and I am still in paradise. Ah. I'm saying, it's great. Of, of course, you have so much experience speaking to Jews in the diaspora, and that's what we're doing tonight. That's what I am, too. And a lot of us wonder, what, what is your view? Should Israel remain the major focus for Jews everywhere. On, on this planet, there are about 14 million Jews. More than five million live in Israel. More than five million live here in the United States. So as head of the Jewish agency, your job isn't only about Israel. Well, of course, uh, I, I believe that this attempt to separate uh, Israel and the Jews of diaspora is a very artificial one. It's true that for many years, uh, Jews of the world had to make a big effort to, to build and to strengthen Israel. And they understood correctly that that's a very important part of their identity. The time, the time has come that Israel will understand that it is in our great interest uh, that there will be strong Jewish communities. And these are two parts of one people. And that's why, yes, I, I hope that my organization, the Jewish Agency for Israel, in fact, will become a real Jewish agency for Jewish people. A Jewish agency for all the Jewish people. Don't miss that, because I'm about to ask, really, I think the key question, which is what are the biggest challenges and opportunities when you're, you're really speaking about the mission in a different way? That even Israel should recognize that stronger Jewish communities all around the world helps Israel, helps us all. So what are the challenges to that? Well, the challenges is to understand, first of all, that, uh, that we are all part of the same story, of great, unique story, which started from uh, Exodus, from Itziat and Mitzrayim, from leaving Egypt and going to, uh, to, to Israel, and that story continues. And we Jews, those who live in Israel, those who live in America, and those who live in Russia, are part of this great story, and we cannot separate one from the other. And uh, our, uh, we have so many challenges. Uh, assimilation or the uh, delegitimization of the state of Israel or Jew Jewish education, strong Israel, strong Jewish communities. The answer to all of this is how to feel yourself connected to your people, how to be inspired by belonging to these people, and how to uh, this feeling can empower you 
to, to make the world a better place. So that is one story of Jewish people. And the uh, Jewish agency, luckily, is centered exactly between Israel and all the Jewish communities. Well, there's so many pockets of disappointment, but so many points of success. As you heard in a very short time, these wonderful people were able to raise three million dollars. And over the years, they've really done these amazing things again and again. But it's not easy. What's your view, especially when you look at America, of all the different organizations we have, community centers, synagogues, day schools, after school schools, and of course the Jewish federations. Do you work in partnership with them all? Uh, well, even those who think that they are fighting one another, they work in the partnership without noticing it. <laughs> Let me give you an example from the different, from, the, from something which looks like the different world. The struggle for Soviet Jewry. That was great struggle, great struggle. And then there were Union of Councils for Soviet Jewry, and Conference for Soviet Jewry, and Coalition for Soviet Jewry, and Students struggle for Soviet Jewry, 35, and many, many other organizations who fought with one another, who didn't talk to one another. I, as a spokesman of Soviet Jewry movement in Moscow, had to take a risk twice to send the same documents to two organizations who are on the same street in New York because they will never talk to one another. <laughs> so it seemed that there is no cooperation. At the same time, when I was arrested and there was KGB put in front of me the long list of my accomplices, uh, of people who were working with me, who were built as accomplices, and organizations. All of these organizations were on the same list. They were all accomplices, and correctly so, because after all, they all contributed to the same great, unique struggle for 25 years of the world Jewish, world Jewry. And KGB was telling to me, who are they? They're a bunch of students and housewives. And really, it was the army of students and housewives who belonged to different organizations, but who all fought the same struggle. And it was good that there were those who were dealing with the establishment, and there were those who were dealing with students, and there were those who were against the establishment. So all of this was good. So today, if you look at today's Jewish world, you know it's good that we have so many organizations connected to different aspects uh, of our life. But in the end, that's what's very important for us to remember. We are all part of the same great, unique story. And Israel, Jewish people, are in the center of the great struggle between freedom and dictatorship, between enlightened world and fundamentalist world. Uh, Jews are those people who are connecting the identity of this world with the freedom of this world.